Welcome to Democratic Television, a program of the Santa Clara County Democratic Party that brings insights, perspectives, and attitudes of our always thoughtful Democratic guests. Our focus today is on grassroots activism. And we're here with our guest, Casey Carpenter, who is a local activist and an author, I don't want to fail to show the book, <laughs> an author of My Journey with Bernie, The Revolution Starts With Us, which is the book that, uh, that you've written and I've read uh, and really enjoyed. And we'll talk a bit about it during our program today. So uh, Casey, uh, in your book, uh, you start with a very interesting story about how you came to be an activist, or really your life before activism. What, uh, could you tell us a bit about yourself and what brought you to that, up to that moment of activism? Absolutely, well, first of all, Bill, thanks for having me on your my show pleasure. today. It's, it's an honor to be here. And you know, my, my life, I was living in Mountain View as a parent, raising our family, you know, active in the schools and the s scouts and the sports. And, uh, you know, before 2016, I voted, I participated in democracy, but I trusted, you know, the system. And it really wasn't until the, uh, the, the Bernie that I, that I recognized that I needed to do much more. Mm -hmm. And it, it was an understanding that I was very fortunate, as many of us are in, you know, Silicon Valley with, you know, college educations were affordable and, you know, great jobs. But I started looking at the next generation, the issues. And it really woke me up, and so I started to get involved. So, uh, and the, your now, I mean this in the nicest way. Your the complacency you describe, and I don't mean that in any kind of insulting way, because I think that that's yeah. probably 98 percent of the body politic of America yes. is in varying, varying, varying phases of that. But it's also just being busy with life. Uh, and, and 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 you were busy in the way that a lot of folks here in Silicon Valley are. Can you tell us where did you grow up here? Did you come here for Silicon Valley? What what brought you here? Yeah, my family moved to California when I was you know an elementary school student, and so grew up in California. Went to UCLA, um, and then went, um, you know, went and got my MBA, and came back to Silicon Valley in 1991. Got mm -hmm. got a job in Silicon Valley, right at you know uh, at the beginning of really the big you know build out of the you know the global internet. So it was mm -hmm. a great time to be um, an engineer, you know, in, in Silicon Valley, and was very fortunate um, to have an opportunity to live in Mountain View, the, the, the great schools and the great communities that are here, um, and it was a great life. Um, but you know, like I said, a lot of the, my, the life-changing experience that Bernie brought for me was recognizing that most of us are too busy to do much more than just raise our families, right. work hard in our jobs, and participate. And democracy requires a lot more from us. It's really something that I recognized and got much more involved. What would you say uh, uh, brought you, uh, made, made you fertile ground to be responsive to Bernie's message? What, what, what in life or in society uh, made that message and that messenger resonate with you? Yeah, two, two things. So, so first, um, it was really the, um, the economic crisis of 2008, mm. um, where um, Wall Street, I trusted, you know, I trust a lot of institutions in our country. Mm. You know, our, our elected leaders, our governments, you know, the corporations, and, and I actually lost significant um, college funds due to the crash of 2008. Money you were saving for your kids. For my kids' dollars. college education. Mm. And so that was kind of the wake up. Right. That, um, what, Nobody likes to lose their hard-earned money. You know, and, and I was not alone. Mm. Millions of Americans lost, you know, lost a lot in that crash. And it was, that was a severe kind of wake-up call for me that it's, it's you know, I hadn't reached the, 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 the goal of, you know, raising my family, but I had to do more to make sure the institutions are trustable. That was the first thing. And then the second thing was my partner, Kathy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, um, a lot of the information I received was on TV. Um, she spent a lot more time reading the books, you know, um, progressive radio, and really getting much more, much more information mm -hmm. to inform her physicians. I talked to her about that. I said, who would you, Kathy, consider for the candidate? And she suggested I would meet Bernie Sanders. Mm. And so really it was those two things, a, a kind of a shock event, and then someone that was much more tuned in to a broader spectrum of information and issues than I had been so far. So the, there's a, there is a gap there, though. You know, there's the uh, 2008 financial crisis, which I think was uh, shocking for a lot of folks in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And then there were the two terms of, of, uh, of President Obama. Were you politically interested during that time or just sort of slowly becoming awake to the issues that you uh, kind of triggered your activism? Later? Yeah, I was definitely, I, I recognized with per with President Obama, mm -hmm. he had a great vision, and um, I voted for him, of course, in both elections. But I think that he needed a lot more support. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I do think that, um, for me, the big change happened in 2015, 2016, 
recognizing that it wasn't just the presidential race, it was the fact that um, you know, millions of people in America needed to needed to be recognized for mm. you know for the for the issues that they had, and when I really am thinking about you know my kids and the other kids that are you know in elementary school and junior highs today. When Bernie talked about you know what we still needed to do and think big, right? Um, for healthcare, for affordable education, for uh, the inequalities, for the environment. Mm -hmm. I recognize that you know no single president could bring about this change. We needed to bring about you know community-led you know um, organization to to get these things done for our kids for the next generation. So you mentioned uh, one of the personal consequences of that financial crisis for you was losing money that you've been saving for your kids to go to college. And uh, and I know f uh, that uh, how does that story end for your kids? Were they able in the end <laughs> to go to college or? Yeah. So Kathy and I are very very. Very thankful. Our four of our children are graduates of college now and, and, and debt free. And and that was really the commitment we made to ensure that they had had that opportunity. But there's so many millions of um, kids today that are facing a very challenging, you know, transition to college and graduates right. that are burdened with student loan debt. So to me that's a huge issue uh, that we need to address. And and you know, when I was uh, you know, at UCLA, college was affordable. And why isn't it that our public, you know, colleges are not affordable today at all of our you know, all right. the people. Is that the uh, the the world that your kids faced when they were <laughs> going to college? A affordable uh, UC system that was accessible to them, or do they really not find that to be the case? Yeah, I think it's the um, you know. Fortunately, we're we're very privileged, um, mm -hmm. you know, here in Silicon Valley, uh, to have great schools and great opportunities, mm -hmm. um, and so they were able to get good opportunities that were matched to their needs. And because we committed to that, that's happened. Um, but I think it's it's these types of issues that we need to recognize for. For all of the, all of our communities, yes, and 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 you know, so I think that was one of the big issues for me, mm -hmm. um, and and so Bernie changed my life because he 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 pointed his finger. He said, "Look, it's not about me; it's about all of us." And that was the day that I knew I was going to do a lot more mm -hmm. to support you know these issues as as an activist. So, it, it, can you tell a little bit about you say the day? Uh, <laughs> so it sounds like it's literally a day that you remember uh, where where. He made some kind of pitch or call, or, and that really inspired you. Can you tell me a little bit Absolutely. about that? Absolutely. How did so, you come to be there? Where <laughs> was it, and what time frame? Well, there, there was actually two days. So the the first day was in the, the campaign kicked off in in July of, of 2015, and mm -hmm. my partner Kathy invited me to go meet Bernie. And like, um, you know, there was about 100,000 people around the country that went to local you know events. I went to the event in Mountain View, mm -hmm. and Bernie was on the um, was on the the video and introduced his message. For the next six months, I listened and I learned about Bernie, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until December that he was speaking at a rally in Reno that I decided to drive up and hear his, um, hear his message in person. I see. And after the, 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 uh, the rally, they invited all the volunteers to meet Bernie, mm -hmm. and um, he pointed his finger and said, look, <laughs> it's not about me, it's about us. And that's when I literally felt the burn. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you really, you really felt that he was speaking to you, and, it was, and you felt you wanted to respond to that call. Yeah, because I knew in my career I had a lot of um, experience, you know, leading teams and organizing and marketing, and I felt like I needed to bring a lot of my experience into the cause and help organize and, and get involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, within a few days, I was uh, helping lead a, a group that brought 300 people to 30 states to the caucus in Iowa. Wow. And so it, it so happened that, really quick. <laughs> that Reno rally was close to the time of the Iowa caucus. Yeah, it was, it was December 27th, right before, it was during the holidays. Mm -hmm. And so it's all that happens pretty early in the, in, the, in the campaign year, doesn't it? Yeah, and I got a call, a few days later, I got a call. Once I made that commitment that I was gonna do everything I could to help Bernie, um, I received a phone call from Stacy Patel, who um, is in Florida, and she said, Casey, mm -hmm. how would you like to help me organize California and other states that come to Iowa for the caucus? Wow, that's, a, that's an amazing uh, follow-up. Uh, did, you, did you intend to take on uh, that kind of responsibility, or did you know you might be asked to do that? I, I, was, I was thinking in my head you know, exactly what I felt when Bernie said, look, you need to do more. Mm -hmm. And I realized this is where I need to, to do it. Mm -hmm. And so it was very scary because we only had a few weeks and we had to organize all these people, um, people we had never met in person. Um, and we literally were able to bring together grassroots from you know th 30 states to the caucus and, and actually get out the vote um, in, in an election that no one really thought Bernie had a chance in. And it, was, it, it resulted in a, in a virtual tie. 
So that effort, uh, your your involvement in it, and in, in, in kind of in that leading way, um, in many campaigns there wouldn't be room for that. I think because of professional campaign staff, and uh, they would have an idea of of how they want things done. Uh, did you get a script, and what resources <laughs> were available to you, and how did you know what to do? Yeah, it was it was absolutely the the whole campaign was about grassroots activists, mm -hmm. and it really was the um, you know it really started with us, mm -hmm. and there were people that had a lot of experience, and so they were the ones that had been in campaigns before, um, but most of us were brand new, mm -hmm. um, and all ages and all demographic groups. And so the campaigns and I were very helpful. We would show up and they'd give us a script, but we really learned from and taught each other. Mm -hmm. And so uh, some of the, um, you know, my best friends now, um, I met during that first trip to Iowa. Right. Uh, many of us continued to campaign in states around the country all the way to Philadelphia and the convention, and today we're still very active. The, the, you, the way you speak about it, just the energy with which you speak about it and, I, and how you wrote about it in your book, um, it seems like it was very empowering to you and very energizing uh, that, it, that there was not a hierarchical organization. And, Absolutely. And I know that sometimes in activism <laughs> people can be frustrated by a lack of organization. What do you think made the difference uh, in the Bernie campaign and, and other experiences where people might feel like <laughs> we're so disorganized we're wasting our time and we're yeah. burning our energy? Well, it, when it's grassroots and bottoms up, that's a very scary place to be. Now mm -hmm. I think the, the analogy for those of us in Silicon Valley, it's like a startup, mm -hmm. right? And so you really just have to kind of let go of this sense that I had to control every decision and let others participate and bring in the innovation, the creativity. And Bernie's campaign, for me, um, that was exactly kind of a wake-up call mm -hmm. because I had been in Silicon Valley in the startups, but most of the my work had moved into a global, slower-moving corporation. Mm -hmm. Well, campaigns need to move faster than that. And right. so startups give you that uh, the ability to be very fast and dynamic and open, but also you don't have that top-down sense of control. Instead of planning in days and months and you know in years, right? It's uh, it's literally hours, minutes, and seconds. Yes, it's interesting because the startup analogy, um, as you know uh, well, that Silicon Valley has um, the idea that you know you really don't want to. Uh, tell people no, you can't, or that's not possible, or it's right. always been, right. uh, and uh, and it's interesting that that dynamic seemed to have been captured in the uh, in the burning movement, which is not just Silicon Valley; it was throughout the country. Exactly. So after Iowa, I ended up personally going to ten states to get out the vote, wow. and worked um, with the uh, Bernie Journey, mm -hmm. which organized um, basically a model for campaign grassroots campaigns to be created around the country. Right. And, and so a lot of that was either online, but then when you actually went out to support, uh, to get out the vote, um, we just continue, you know, we just completed the, the primary here in California, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what we learned in Iowa and what we're continuing to share with others is to go talk to people door to door, what we call door knocking. Mm -hmm. That's when you talk to people about their issues and you listen, you understand. Mm -hmm. And so not only did I meet a lot of other volunteer activists, I've met a lot of Americans on my journey with Bernie. And that was also, that really fueled me, and I think it, it fuels a lot of candidates that are running on, on a people-powered approach. Fabulous. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit more about your approach to, to door knocking and, and your involvement um, in the campaign and, uh, and, and some other aspects of your journey. But thank you so much for uh, the information you've shared in the first part of the show, and we'll be back after a short break. Excellent. Thank you. Hello. My name is Cindy Chavez, and I have been um, active in the Democratic Party for many years. And the thing I would say to all of you who are watching this is sometimes the problems seem bigger than we can handle. But if you get involved, we can make great change. If you'd like to get involved with the Democratic Party, call 408-445-9500. If you're interested in some of the big issues of the day and you want to get more information, go to the website at sccdp.org. Don't let another day go by just wishing you could do something. Take action. Call. Thank you. We're back with Casey Carpenter, who is an author and activist. He's written a book, My Journey with Bernie, The Revolution Starts With Us. It's about uh, Casey's experiences as a as a activist involved in the Bernie Sanders campaign and uh, and some of the things that have happened since then, which we'd like to make yes. sure we spend some time getting to yes. in this second half of the show. Uh, right before the break, you were talking about knocking on doors, and mm -hmm. uh, it struck me in the number of times you mentioned in your book uh, the way that you went about doing that. I know often yes. a campaign will have a script, and uh, they'll knock on the door, they'll get the person at the door, and they'll have the things they want to talk 
at them about, uh, but you speak of it more about listening to them about their issues. Was that uh, an approach that you came upon or one that the campaign encouraged uh, activists to use? How did, how did you take on that approach? Yeah, the campaign really encouraged us to use active listening. And mm -hmm. basically you go, you knock on the door, you smile, mm -hmm. and you basically you know, say, I'm a volunteer, I traveled you know, from California to Iowa, and I'd like to talk to you about the issues. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you get people talking about their issues, most people have very common ground on a number of issues. So rather than trying to force a campaign, you know, or a candidate or a position, you listen. Right. And I've, I've done this now for the last two years. I can tell in a blink of an eye, just when I first meet someone, if they're going to be open to listening, mm -hmm. or for me to listen, or if they're already, you know, locked into a position. Right. But you smile, say hello. Can we talk for a few minutes about what interests you? Mm -hmm. It's a very one-to-one, -one, one person at a time approach, and it's very powerful. So you, you're, you're sort of trying to identify the people that you feel are not yet fixed in a position, that they might be willing to tell a little bit about what they're concerned about, and then if that matches the campaign and the promise of the candidate, you feel that then you have a chance to convince them. Absolutely. It's like we said earlier about how most of us are so busy, mm -hmm. we're not even really paying attention. Right. And yet because they're so busy, who is this person knocking on my door? Right. <laughs> but once you identify that they don't really have that knowledge and education or information, right. they start talking about the issues, then you can provide them information. It might be about education we discussed earlier health care mm -hmm. you know inequalities and so it's that was the first lesson we learned and it's something you know this was a roller coaster ride and you know many highs and many lows but the best practices and the lessons I learned I learned from the campaign and other grassroots activists it seems like uh, you mentioned that some folks involved in the campaign had been doing politics before but it does seem like there was a fairly high proportion of people who like you were sort of activated by the campaign uh, was that was that the experience that you had? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's millions of people that got activated really by Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. and a lot of younger kids, but also people my age and older that um, decided right. to get involved for the first time. But we were supported by activists. Mm -hmm. People have been doing this since the 60s, the 70s, and really involved and really taking that harmony of all the different voices and all the different people and bringing them together. Mm -hmm. That was a very powerful lesson. And I'm glad to see that now I have, you know, so many thousands of friends in California around the country because of this, uh, this, uh, this revolution. It does sound like it, um, it has uh, sparked a movement that you continue to be active in. H how much of, of uh, uh, the phenomenon do you think is uh, attributable to Bernie Sanders as a as a personality or as a politician as opposed to things that he represented and, and spoke to yeah I think it was both um, Bernie is a very you know um, powerful speaker and a powerful voice right. but he's been doing this for decades mm -hmm. right and the message really got out in 2016 and now it's it seems like the progressive message everyone agrees with these ideas that Bernie's been talking about for decades so I mm -hmm. think it was a couple of things um, it was the right moment Mm. And it's really what's happening in our society, in our country, in California. Um, people started to listen and pay attention to the issues. I don't think um, without Bernie, it right. wouldn't have happened, but now it's not, as Bernie likes to say, it's not me, it's us. Right. So it's grown into a movement, and you know, there's now thousands of people running for office in you know, school boards and city councils, assembly districts, uh, thanks to Bernie planting the seeds of 2016. Right. The um, uh, in that in that season, I have to ask you because I also have a busy Silicon Valley job. How did you manage to find time? How did you make time, <laughs> carve out time to do all this to run the pro help run the program in Iowa and and, and get out of Pennsylvania? Yeah. So for the, for, for the good news was, um, um, I had an opportunity. I traveled a lot with my mm -hmm. job, and I would literally um, I was a you know computer based job, so I could do a lot of work on part time. Um, while I was working, I could multitask. Right. But a lot of my trips took me to different places in the country and around the world. Um, but then, actually, after the campaign last year, mm. I, I retired from my career and I'm now full time act as an activist. Wow, fabulous. And, and it turns out I'm actually working even harder now. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> when you're passionate about something, it can really consume you, right? Yeah. It did. But I think it's an important message is that whether you can, you know, you can participate. In democracy, full time or just part time, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you can give really adds up, and we need people it to really be able matters. to give. It really matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. 
What was uh, the role of technology in the campaign? The technology, was it really uh, relied on or just used in the conventional way? Huge. Yeah. So the way that we organized was all digital. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was using, you know, Facebook groups. It was using Google Forms. Mm -hmm. We scaled the so operation. So halfway good tools that are free, right? Yeah, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of innovators, like, created tools, you know, a texting tool called Hustle, mm -hmm. you know, a, a friends of friends on Facebook tool. Mm -hmm. So a lot of innovation came from Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. A lot of creativity was produced by artists and musicians and people that are producing video content. And right. so a huge, I'd say, factor was if you don't have the money mm -hmm. in a campaign, you have to rely on people and innovation and creativity. Right. And so the tools that we have that are available for free really made a big difference and continue to today. Wow. So uh, all of this work you're doing on the campaign, uh, I know that it, uh, from the, reading the book that, uh, and those who want to know the full story are going to have to read the book because we won't have time today <laughs> to go through the whole story, yeah. uh, My Journey with Bernie by uh, Casey Carpenter. But uh, you, uh, you ended up being a delegate for Bernie at the national convention. And uh, uh, tell me about that process. How did you even find out how to do it and learn yeah. to navigate the rules? So actually, in, in fact, that was one of the biggest learnings is learning how democracy works. And mm. every state is different. And so in California, we elect our delegates in a caucus mm -hmm. that happens before the primary for, for, for election years. Now, not a lot of people know about this. Right. Not a lot of people participate. Mm. But in the, uh, the caucus process here, we were able to send um, three delegates. Great. And so I door knocked every house <laughs> around Mountain View to try mm -hmm. to get support. Um, and that's unfortunate. We actually need to increase the awareness of the caucuses for not only the, the presidential convections, but also the Democratic Party, right. also caucus pro process. Right. Um, but once I discovered it, I made a commitment in Iowa, along with some of my other friends, that we'd all meet each other in Philadelphia. Wow. So I was committed to it, and many of my friends were there as delegates or volunteers. So you managed to get yourself elected as a delegate uh, uh, to, to Philadelphia. Um, there's a, a number of, of uh, stories in your book about delegates banding together and supporters banding together to finance those trips and make sure the delegates could really go, which I think is a, another example of grassroots Absolutely. activism supporting each other. And uh, uh, just to fast forward, uh, that must have been both fascinating uh, uh, and uh, uh, but also uh, sobering uh, trip right. for Bernie delegates. Um, you're, you tell a lot of the story, and I'm, it's remarkable about how little sleep you got during that entire <laughs> period, so I don't know how you yeah. managed to function at all, but can you say a little bit about what was going on at that time? Yeah, so once we, we were able to overcome the challenges of just getting all the 1,900 delegates to Philadelphia, right. we had to organize, mm -hmm. and the California um, delegates was the largest group. Mm -hmm. So we actually had our own election. Right. We decided to elect our leaders and, and in terms of two co-chairs from Northern and Southern California and also WIPs. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make the most of the convention. I mean, our first priority, of course, was to go and vote for Bernie, which we did. Right. But second of all, of all we wanted to make sure that the messages, uh, the progressive messages were voiced at the convention. Right. And so we organized every day. We were meeting and organizing to talk about the issues, no more war, you know, income inequality. And, and that was actually something that, you're right, we didn't sleep at all that week. <laughs> I imagine. Uh, you touch on this very well in your book, uh, but it seemed like the objectives of the delegate community, it may have been, uh, uh, they, they, they went beyond just a little bit. It, it seemed like there was the hope that you would turn it, you'd be able to turn it around, like with hard work and by being convincing. Did, did delegates for Bernie still hope when, they, when you went to Philadelphia that there might be some way you could turn it around. We absolutely did, because in 2016 there was both the pledged delegates that were elected, like myself, mm -hmm. and also the super delegates, the elected officials that really committed to the campaign before Bernie even entered the race. Right. And um, we actually believe that um, Bernie would have been a better candidate versus Trump based on the factor that if you bring together you know, not only the people for Bernie and the Democratic Party, but the people that would have voted, we felt like we had a better candidate to defeat Trump. Mm -hmm. So we were really trying to encourage the superdelegates to align with the popular vote in each of their states. In some states, it actually, the states voted for Bernie, but they ended up, because of the superdelegates, not getting as many pledged votes. I see. So we went into Philadelphia with the goal to elect Bernie. 
um, and try to convince the superdelegates. So pundits uh, by then, though, were saying that, that Clinton had it locked up. And, and it seemed like that the diehard Bernie folks and, the, more importantly, the Bernie delegates were still clinging to the idea that you might be able to turn it around. And I hear what you're saying about the, uh, the superdelegates. Did you, did you find, in the end, that they were less um, open to being swayed at that point than, than delegates had hoped for? Yeah, at that time, the superdelegates were locked in. And the reason why many of us really believe it was important is we traveled to some of those key states. I mm -hmm. was in Pennsylvania. Um, I had people come to Mountain View for two weeks from all over the country, um, from Wisconsin, from Ohio, mm -hmm. from Virginia. And so people that did that grassroots listening on the ground, we felt that it was going to be very close and that it, and that Bernie would be a better candidate, especially in those states. Mm -hmm. um, we were not successful then, although I think now the message has been delivered for the party to be much more open and, and led by people rather than a superdelegate process. So I think we're actually making progress in that area. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, in your activism, we came to know each other really after that time, yes. uh, and in your activism uh, locally, uh, one of the uh, great things that, is, as party chair, I appreciate your being involved with is, is being a co-founder of the uh, Bayshore Progressive Democrats. And, yes. uh, and in your book, you talk about Bernie folks deciding, are we going to dem exit, or are we going to dem enter, and really you know, commit to uh, uh, a vision of the Democratic Party by through participation. Can you just say a little bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah. So that was really, you know, that began when we were elected to go to Philadelphia. Right. Then it continued um, not only in California but around the country mm -hmm. uh, to organize, to enter the party, mm -hmm. uh, and then to create clubs. The Bayshore Progressive Democrat Club is one of the clubs I helped co-found it. It's an awesome club. Please join it. <laughs> it's, it's a great, great. group. Yes. Um, I've actually had the opportunity to travel around with my book tour and, and, and meet with other clubs in California around the world. And so this is not only happening in California, it's happening in Michigan, it's happening in Florida, it's happening in Pennsylvania, it's happening in Iowa. It's happening in the sense that you see that there are Berniecrats who have committed to the party and are trying to, to Berniecrats, influence it from the inside. Democratic Socialists, Our Revolution, um, and, and really bringing together, you know, this... Um, this harmony of voices, yes. which is really the power of the people. Mm -hmm. And based on the model Bernie taught us, you know, first of all, let's use grassroots activism and reject the corporate money from the top, right. and let's organize locally. Mm -hmm. And then we can actually create change in our communities that is sustainable. Well, very good. I, I appreciate so much your perspective. Uh, I appreciate your commitment to the Democratic Party and carrying forward the values uh, and the movement and the skills you learned as a grassroots activist uh, in the Bernie campaign. Um, uh, in sharing that with others through your book, which I encourage people to read because I think it's, it's, it great, provides great insight for those of us who were not burners uh, to understand what was going on uh, in that campaign and in, in your movement. Thank you so much. Yeah. And it's my journey with uh, Bernie.com. Very good. Okay, <laughs> fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for watching DTV. Give us a call at 408-445-9500 or visit our website at www.sccdp.org. Help us to make a difference. We'll see you on the campaign trail.